time again is the same, five to seven minutes. So at five minutes, you will be seeing the green card, at six minutes, the yellow card, and at seven minutes, the red card. Speaker number two tonight is Toastmaster Allen, and the name of his speech is Randomized Block Theorem. So I'd like to welcome you, Toastmaster Allen. Well, advanced statistics is very mathematically complicated. No chance that anybody here would understand it. I thought I'd give it a shot. But we'll try to leave out the math and just see if it makes sense. You can all remember high school algebra, physics, and all that, right? Okay, we'll try this. If our incline is very, very slight, then the ball will roll very slowly. Okay? If our incline is a little bit sharper, then we'll roll a little faster. That makes sense. And if the incline is very steep, then roll is very quick. Correct. That's known as the law of gravitation. The law of gravitation is so exact that we need not argue about it. We could represent that law this way. Well, lo and behold, it sticks. <laughs> I was hoping that would happen. Now, suppose our angle is slight. It doesn't roll very fast. If our angle is steeper, it rolls faster. If it's steeper yet, it rolls faster, and so forth. And we can represent that as a bar chart like this, or we could represent it as a line like this. Does that make sense? Sure. So on our y-axis here, we can say the speed of the roll is a function of the angle of incline. So the greater the incline, the faster the roll. The roll, the speed of the roll being indicated by the height of the yellow bar. Now let's look at it another way. And let's supposing that we're adding nitrogen to a field of rice. If we add so much nitrogen, we get so much yield. If we add a little more nitrogen, we get a little more yield. And a little more, and a little more. Unfortunately, this isn't the law of gravitation. There are errors in sampling. There is unevenness in the field. There may be a moisture gradient out there. Maybe the sunlight isn't even. So we don't get this perfect relationship. But we give it a shot to see what we get. And it could be that it's not quite this exact. And then we also have that problem of the gradient. You know, more sunlight on one side of the field or more moisture. And so when we do this experiment, we don't put it all in a row like this. We mix it up a little bit. We put this treatment over here. We put this treatment over here and this treatment over here so that if there are any errors in measurements, they will average themselves out. And then we do some complicated mathematics on this and we come up with a percentage. This is called an R value. 100% R means we have a perfect fit, just like we would with gravitation. Perfect fit. But if they're a little bit different here and there, we would only get about a 90% fit. And that 90% fit is nice, but we want to know the probability that we're wrong about this relationship with the nitrogen. What's that probability function? The probability associated with a 90% fit is probably something like 0.01. One chance in 100 that we're wrong. I know this is coming at you kind of fast, but these are good things to know. And that's how good science is done. Not 90% of the science we have out there today, which is garbage. And I do mean garbage. They're lying to you, man. Well, let's forget about that. I'm going to get on a rant. Okay, but you understand the point. We don't have a perfect situation here. We don't have a perfect... But we think that we, if the random variation and the unknowns and the sampling errors were taken out of it, we only have a 1 in 100 chance of being wrong, and that's acceptable. And that's a 90% fit. And if it so happens to be a nonlinear relationship, that's OK. We can transform the data and run that through the computer and see if we, you know, we still have our fit. It's not a problem. But one replication. You know, this is just what they call a replication. This is one trial. 
you know, and, and there's a lot of variation out there. I mean, even if there's some variation and you mix them up and average it out, you know, some of these results are not going to be quite what they should be. They're not going to be quite correct. We would like a little bit of a better averaging situation, so we do the experiment twice in the same field. Oops. And we get this. Remember, these are actually mixed up a little bit, but I've straightened them out here so you can see what happens. At this level of nitrogen, this level of nitrogen, and this level of nitrogen, and this level of nitrogen, and this replication, which is a complete block, we put it out here and we get, well, we get larger values for everything. Why? Because we probably have a moisture gradient coming from this direction, excuse me. And as a matter of fact, this is the way we want to orient this, these two blocks perpendicular to that to that moisture gradient because if that's affecting our yields which it obviously is we want it to affect everything in this block separately from this block yeah and then we can remove that variation but guess what we'll try it again third replication that actually works well <laughs> never mind let's just pretend we got three you know let's take them. There's always errors, okay? So these things aren't perfect. This data that we collect aren't perfect, but when we run it three times, the averages are much better. Now the randomized block theorem is Allen Foose's special. Because Allen Foose, because the, the R value, remember we had a 100%, 90%, 80% fit? But you can't do that on three replications at one time, and you can't do it from replication to replication, and you can't do it for all the treatments at one time one time. But the R value that I derive mathematically allows you to do that. So if the R value, randomized block R value by Alan Foose, the randomized block theorem says you have an R value of 9.9, .9, excuse me, that means 90% of the variation is accounted for by this linear model that says the increase in yield is a function of the nitrogen that you apply, the amount of nitrogen. I hope that makes sense. I hope I'm not saying it too fast. But I want you to understand that. And so the R value for, for the randomized block theorem can calculate the goodness of fit for all of the treatments in a randomized block as well as the influence of an extraneous variable moisture on yield, which is a new thing that, that 28 years ago. So I thank you for the opportunity of this presentation. And the mathematics is available on my website, foosesolvesunified.com. Thank you. brought back memories for me of both physics and statistics <laughs> and actually seventh grade science when I first started learning. <laughs>